All right, welcome back to part two, uh, part two of two. <laughs> we, we spontaneously cut part three because part one ran long for good reasons. Um, so welcome back to part two of two. Um, we want to go through now and break this thing down as a pilot. Um, what you saw in part one was like a lot of the raw ideas that helped us establish the town, helped us establish the character, and really helped us establish a bunch of motivations, especially if you just skipped ahead to part two and you missed uh, like the last half of part one, go back and at least watch the last 10 minutes. It's pretty good stuff. Um, so now we're here. We're going to take a look at this thing as a pilot. And I think what we're all talking about here is let's talk about her for a little bit and all the very anything about her you know we we just got a big piece of it i think from ursula but like anything that we want to use to nail down these details about her past her present and her future uh i think we should talk about that and let's also talk about the nature of this uh creature there's been some push towards like do we add in some supernatural i think we know we're dealing with some military um shenanigans uh from a nearby base uh so that's that um christopher did you want to pick up on this side or are you good yeah, yeah, because I actually do have a, a couple things Great. Uh, here now if we're shifting to these topics. Um, so I want to dial back to uh, something Ken actually said a while ago because it helped solve a problem for me that I would had trying to think this through, which is the problem of time, mm -hmm. um, which is basically if the dad has vanished in Afghanistan – well, I think years that one ago went out the window but yeah and like if we're operating on that principle mm -hmm. and then he suddenly comes back emerging now like and you were just also describing earlier if the process takes several weeks that is the question of then what has been happening mm -hmm. uh and i think when we started talking about the town as this base and the idea that the dad has been good at escaping, but also they've sort of noticed his escaping. It's like like every so often, maybe they're just like using the town as a Petri dish, essentially. And they're sort of viewing that. And so it's this sort of controlled experiment. Every so often we let him out. And then... Now that the mom is sick, as other people have said, now he's starting to get uncontrolled and they're sort of losing control of this thing, which also led me to the possibility that maybe one of the people who's trying to recruit her back is working for the program and are trying to use her to cover uh, their yep. tracks. I, I And I, I think... This this is what I think. Uh, I think everything you've said is stuff we would spend a week debating when we talk about the season. I think mm -hmm. just in, in raw terms of the pilot, I think, just, and, and again, not because mm -hmm. of, I would, I wish we had <laughs> 20 weeks and we could all go delve into this yeah. thing long term. But uh, just in terms of attacking the pilot today, I think all this stuff in terms of how it relates to the pilot is like, yeah, it's important that we know how long the dad's been gone. I think the Afghanistan mm -hmm. thing was just sort of a, you know, a, a placeholder from not mm -hmm. knowing the story better, but once the base got moved to the town and the actual experimentation did, I do mm -hmm. think the one thing the military would be, it, you know, this bad faction mm -hmm. of the military would be smart enough to do is not like get exposed by terrorizing one particular place too much unless they just completely had that place under control. Um, mm -hmm. I think this thing is like, like to me, it's like the murders, the, 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 the monster attacks are uh, a huge, like, red flag we gotta fix this to the black part of town <laughs> the white part of town the military like i think everybody is opposed to this like i you know what i mean it's like that like this, this is a problem and the, and i think the military scrambly because it's like this was not part of the plan and it's but anyway uh yeah let's let's uh this is good mm -hmm. stuff i i Ah, maybe yeah. we'll be able to circle back. God damn it. Yeah, I, I do have one thing about her. <laughs> yes. As well, and where she is about. Because we've been talking about um, you know, her seeing something in the town. What if she sees something in the city? Mm -hmm. And that puts her a bit on the outs with everyone there, but it means if or if she's seen something before in the city, that means she's had a more open mind to this kind of it's a monster. Right. Thing. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
I get, I was, part of me was just wondering, I wonder if it's, anyway, we'll get there. Um, Nick, Ashley, Ken, Sharice, Blake. What's up, Nick? Hi. Well, I was just thinking about how we could kind of synthesize some of these different ideas. Mm -hmm. I really love Ursula's share, especially about um, talking about the hidden town. And what we have is sort of these, these themes of like feeling hidden, feeling silenced. And um, so if part of her motivation in moving from the city to the town is that she was silenced or didn't feel like she was moving ahead enough in the city. But I, what I really think is if we can make the catalyst as much internal and external. So if that trigger point for her moving back is that her mom has really gotten sick. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's also the catalyst for some of them that these monster attacks are like homing in. So we also were talking about like decommission decommissioning uh, the military base. What if in that process, that's how he escaped. So this hasn't been like he's been escaping for all this time. It's like they're shutting down the secret program one of them got out and then now that's leading. So it's just trying to align more what's going on personally with her is also what's triggering the monster. How can we kind of combine those threads? So it's just more tightly unified, if that makes sense. Yeah. So I really like the mom having the dementia because like in the sense of her thinking that she sees her father, I think that's not enough of a thread that we're not going to be tying that in that her father is the monster, even though eventually we're getting hey, there. No spoilers. I'm sorry. <laughs> no spoilers yet. But then she's very much dealing with like um, with this feeling of silence, but also the people that are left behind. I love the idea that she's got a friend in the town that has been a social worker and that person being victimized. But that was also the sign of like, you can stay and make a change here versus maybe her brother who's been taking care of the mother who's just like, you, you can stay and not make a change and just try to survive. So we almost have three different tracks of dealing with this. The town is the monster. And now we have the actual monster. Yeah. Yeah. The town is monster. Actual monster stuff is really good. It's like, and I wonder if in terms of a pilot, if it does, it's like, okay, we have this, right? And then it's like, it's uh, her needing to go back home. And it's like either there's a part of me that's like, well, you do a direct pickup to her just being home and you deal with it. And then there's a part of me. It's like, but we need to like set up why this is a problem on so many levels um, and what, what this is, you know, triggering in her <laughs> at this moment and what's going on in the city that it's aggravating. I liked your idea. It's like that idea that something has recently happened professionally. What I don't want to do is like, oh, I broke up with my boyfriend. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Yeah, no. And it's like, <laughs> ah, but it's like the idea of like, actually I should be detective lieutenant right now, but like, so, you know, like some, you know, shenanigans happened where, you know, <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> sorry, Ashley. Well, it leads up? into the oh. being silenced, like being silenced, not progressing, you know, like she's been passed over for promotion. So maybe that would also make sense. And like, yeah, I just that's so, what he says, but the external and the internal are really aligning to me in terms of this, the, the secretiveness, the being silenced, and also feeling like pushing her to start making a, a change in her life. That new emotion is I'm going to investigate this. I'm going to become the bigger fish in the pond, in the small pond kind of thing. I wonder if it's like this. I'm just throwing this out there. But like, what if uh, it's like, God, I don't want to mess it up in here. But just to, like uh, just in trying to expand this world and the logic of what's going on. OK, mom is older now and has problems. She's been living with her sister, you know, like the two of them. You know what I mean? How it is when, you know, the sister dies. <laughs> comes back for funeral now what with mom sibling is like i can't <laughs> do that alone take her with you you know take her to the city to a facility in the city and it's like you know and the, anyway um and you know mom hugely doesn't want to leave i won't be able to see your daddy again you know, and it's like, what's dad been doing for three years, you know, or whatever is like, I mean, like is casually slipping away from this place. And it's like, so it creates this like, you know, and then, I, and again, I'm just, you know, as, and I, I, I feel like this doesn't pass the Ursula test, but I, 
I, do, I would like to find a, like, what I'm looking for is a version of something like this. Her hometown friend, best friend, si like a sister, you know, bet more than a sister, really, you know, sister, you don't have to like. Um, <laughs> if you're watching Katie, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> uh, her hometown best friend, more than a sister. Shit, now do we edit? Damn. Um, <laughs> I like my sister. Leave me alone, people. Uh, her hometown best friend is like more than a sister um, has been working to repair, uh, you know, um, or has been working to, I, you know what I mean? Like I'm going to put in the dumb slug, uplift the town, repair an aspect <laughs> of, ah, why? You know, it's not the right idea when you can't type it has been working to like do something good in the town um, believes recruiting her to come back um, as sheriff would uh, be big emotional uplift. You know, local girl makes good, essentially. Um, also, <laughs> obliquely, there's, it's like, okay, and again, bear with me. Years ago, her father was military but was a whistleblower sent after to a dangerous assignment. I'm thinking of Abraham Bolden here. I don't know if you know that story, but somebody needs to do it. And I, I, I had the rights with Nate Parker at one time. And then I don't know if you know how that turned out. Um, but it was, uh, it was like me and Nate Parker, right. As he won Sundance and like, then, you know, there was some, you know, there was a shift in his career, but, um, Abraham Bolden was the first uh, black Secret Service agent to work the presidential detail when he was handpicked by Kennedy during a visit in Chicago to come work on the White House detail. Um, hated it uh, because of the, you know, frat boy racism antics of his co-workers who just really made his life hell. Um, went back to Chicago, uh, worked a case in early November of 1963 uh, about this guy named um, Thomas Valley who was arrested uh, with high-powered rifles uh, and a scope because he worked on a building in a warehouse building along the lines of what was going to be the president's uh, motorcade going through Chicago in early November uh, and um, was picked up at the last minute by Bolden and Chicago police uh, in, in his attempt to kill JFK in the exact same scenario that happened like two, the exact same scenario that happened like two weeks later in Dallas. <laughs> and uh, when the Dallas thing happened, Bolden went to the Warren Commission, told them everything he knew about Chicago, and they arrested him for taking a $50,000 bribe and put him in a mental asylum for seven years. <laughs> and so, um, and Mr. Bolden himself is a, like a wonderful guy like a really interesting guy and a jazz musician and um just all these crazy things but just a yeah one of those crazy american lives but anyway dad was military was a whistleblower sent after to a dangerous assignment mia <laughs> actually brought in to be part of what he was whistleblowing against uh, anyway um but I think this is sort of a little compendium of everything that we've been talking about. Like to 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 fall, am I kick 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 it around? Where am I? Uh, I know I, I'm probably wrong somewhere. If there's something I'm wrong about, let me know. Oh, there's Blake. I was just looking around. Like, did we lose Blake? Uh, all right, Ken, Sharice, and Blake. Sorry, everybody. Ken, what's up? Hey. Okay. So I I have a I have a couple of pitches with uh um with our main character who uh. I now am also having a hard time not thinking of as Ursula. Um, so, I just just from a just from a uh, practical just from a practical standpoint, um, I like the idea of her being a badass. Um, just be, you know, number one, just because the whole you know kind of butt kicking girl, you know, kind of kind of trope. But I feel like that also gives us something that we can subvert a little. Uh, you know, like maybe she's physically tough, but you know, uh, more emotionally fragile. Well, we, we can figure that out. But um, I also like the idea, um, but it also gives her like a lot of ability to enact agency, you know, as she's discovering things. Uh, maybe she's also pretty good at like kind of military field surveillance, uh, which would give her a chance to, 
you know, kind of set up like uh, uh, cameras out in the woods to capture events, that kind of thing. But mm -hmm. she's familiar with the equipment and the procedures, so she can just put it into action in a way that none of the townies would be able to. Um, I also like, and this is this is definitely something that uh, Ursula could probably uh, help her find. Um, if there's uh, if there's a friction between sort of the the uh, the black part of town and the white part of town, I like the idea of her having a reputation that she was the person that would just never back down. You know that that like she she refused to be cowed. She refused to be you know kind of put in her place, um, and that's gotten her into trouble sometimes. But um, I love the idea if the uh, if the original sheriff uh before he was injured or killed uh was a white dude um i like the idea that within the town charter um that they get to name that sheriff gets to name their interim replacement uh should anything happen to them and that's uh, like a sealed thing and that he has named her uh as the uh as the replacement and that there winds up there there becomes some friction because everybody in town was fine with you know, a, a white guy being the sheriff, but uh, a black woman coming in as his replacement um, has a lot of people, you know, kind of up in arms and the sheriff's an elected position, but the interim position is not. And um, anyway, those are, those are my pitches for now, but pending yeah. Ursula's approval. <laughs> oh, awesome. All right, Sharice Blake, Jacob Ashley, what's up Sharice? So I have something to say about her leaving the city. I mm, think good. part of the setup of that should be, you know, like when you go from like a smaller place to a big town, you think like that is going to be the cure for all of your ills, right? Mm -hmm. And I think we can show her just kind of sick to death of like things in the city. Like there are big city annoyances and things that you're just like, I can't take it anymore mm -hmm. and so that could be oops oh that could be um part of the setup of before she mm -hmm. gets to town because then it's like it would make coming back home even though like none of us want to once you leave you don't want to really think about going back home but there are like certain heart draws that you can't help especially if there are still people there who you love yeah I, every time I go back to, I'm always overwhelmed by like, oh my God, it's so green. Like she just is like overwhelmed by this feeling right. of what's different, you know? Right. I mean, maybe um, she steps out of her apartment in the city and steps in dog crap. I mean, I know this is like, you know, right. but just like one thing after another where it's just like, these are the things that happen when you live in the city. Right. This isn't that kind of story, but I, I've always been attracted to those stories where it's like small town person realizes they're too good for this place, gives everybody the finger, <laughs> leaves fails comes back <laughs> you know what i mean i just i've always loved that uh that little thing you know that feeling I, I, was, I was just tempted to do it so many times um blake what's on your mind um just wanted to go back a little bit i know it's a little maybe trivial in comparison to everything else we've been talking about <laughs> you were retro uh, yeah. uh you have not bold monster attacks uh every, um, every once in a while and it's mm. a little on that i kind of want to know a little bit more about these monster attacks How you are we... the monster guy that's for sure i am and self-appointed <laughs> <laughs> someday someday the world How... will catch up how um, are we uh, presenting them here are, are they is it a seemingly dispassionate rampage uh, and uh, a little bit blind or are, are we taking a little bit more frankenstein misunderstood uh domino effect into worse uh, uh scenarios basically what perspective are we watching from these monster attacks from and uh what are the what, is, what what's the impression we are meant to get from them I, I love it here's my answer so far uh <laughs> You're like, uh, let's figure it out. You know what I mean? Um, I, 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 in my happening. mind, it was definitely fallen back on the Frankenstein model, but I think it's morphed since then. You know what I mean? Into something a little bigger too. And uh, listen, I, I, I know a bunch of us here are like horror loving people. So uh, maybe this is something to dive into for a second. I feel like she has come into real focus in the last couple. Like, I love all of this. You, like this, all of this makes me really happy. I don't know about you. And um this stuff about like the you know like we need to find her full like I love the idea emotionally everything that it means I think we need to find what that means but yeah let's deviate for a couple of minutes and talk about something just fun if that's okay um the monsters uh look 
what do we know so far? Military base, secret science, you know, um, transforming humans to weapons. Um, I, I mean, that's the kind of stuff I really like. You know what I mean? But I'm uh, beyond that, it's all good. Are they killing people? Are they just sightings? Are they out there fighting each other? Are people seeing... Uh, do they find tracks first and then it gradually built like like whatever that it is it's like it's all good for me like you mentioned that the military base is just kind of setting it loose on the town for like uh, just kind of many experiments so i i'd i'd say there's like multiple perspectives we can view that from from the perspective of the military base from the perspective of the town itself and then <laughs> from, the, from the perspective of the monster who's kind of caught right. in between both so of them. what a, like, look i just had the stupidest idea um, and be prepared to say, if, if this jackass can have a career, anybody can. Um, <laughs> all, all I could picture is this opening when you said that was like, <laughs> it's so stupid. It's like, it's like, uh, like, the, like below the Coliseum, like back in the old days and the tunnels and the doors rising and everything, you know, and you're down in these tunnels and this door rises and it's like some giant like leopard or some horrible thing just comes out. It's like sucking through or it's somewhere, you know, whatever that it is, some big creature kind of thing. And it comes through and then this other door opens and it's just like a clearly mutated human being, you know, and it's just this like horrible, like blood clash between all of them. While all the other little pseudo monsters and people are like looking through the grates of their little six inch by six inch with they're like, ah, ah. you know, like, like encouraging on their little fighter. Anyway, like I said, uh, see, if you ever worry <laughs> that you're not going to have a big career, uh, you'll be fine. Um, hey, I I do yeah. have a pretty pretty specific pitch <laughs> for the the monster side of things. If, if Which you got, Ken? Time. And then we'll, um, and then yeah, and then I'm gonna pluck brains Blake's brain for just one more minute, and then we'll go back to our regularly scheduled programming. Okay, so so <laughs> uh, uh, there was uh, uh, I can't remember the title of it, but there was a uh, there was a movie that that got really hot um, about a year or two ago. Uh, which was uh, uh, American GIs fighting uh, German werewolves in World War II. Um, so if we kind of take a thread of that and then and then and then wind it forward, um, so the idea is that uh, American GIs World War II uh, Hitler was trying to weaponize werewolves. Yeah, um, they actually caught one um and um were able to kind of extract genetic material from it yep. and then american scientists are like hey if it's good enough for hitler yeah um yeah so but, and so you know, the it's funny, idea the is... very first script that mike flanagan and i wrote together was about a group of soldiers who are overrun by wolves left for dead in tattered pieces and then we meet them in like a medical facility like months later and they've been mm. bitten by werewolves and turned into werewolves and like the military has them detained and they're like dropping them into places for like uh like plausibly deniable missions you know mm. so, anyway. um. so 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 the idea would be um so this is not original formula uh uh the the uh american military since world war ii has been trying to refine this material into sort of a super soldier captain america kind of thing um but at least we still... didn't collaborate with nazis oh never mind Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so um, it's nowhere near ready, um, but um, but you know there there's this is the early testing phase. So they've been working on it since the '40s. Fast forward to now, and now they're kind of trying it out. So yep. Um, yep. and from a from a practical standpoint, um, kind of thinking about uh, uh, Blake as as the monster master, I like the idea of there being kind of a musical cue. <laughs> so like anytime we're about to have a monster attack, we kind of bring in that like that slow burn sort of right. key, you know, kind of suspended chord keys music, and you know, oh, it's about to go down. Blake's worlds are colliding. Um, but the 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 military from a field perspective, but also from a test perspective, would have to have sort of like an like an off switch. They need like a safety so that they aren't so that the the right people the the military folks they um the the uh the the scientists don't get savaged by their own creation so i like the idea of there being like a secret like a backdoor 
kind of thing that the that the test subjects have been conditioned <laughs> that they won't attack if they experience this. It right. could be like it could be like a certain pitch pipe tune a tone. It could be you know it could be anything that just like it gives us later in the season something to discover that like prevents you from being attacked. Yep, that's very interesting. The uh, the we 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 stopped working on it, but one of the things I was working on with with um with John and Sandy Carpenter was, uh, this this woman gets this job that's so secret she doesn't get to know what it is until she gets it and then when she gets it she discovers that it's to administer this group basically it was like the the military has captured supernatural creatures from all around the world and all different cultures and has like samples of them in prison that they're trying to figure out how to turn into plausibly deniable weapons or use or all that stuff and it's like curating this set of monsters and then it evolved into something else but it's like it, it I, I have to admit in the back of my mind it's been like well, what's this military project? What's this thing that's going on? It's like, well, they've collected a whole bunch of stuff from all over the world and history and this and that. Like that Nazi thing is one piece of it. This, this, that, like all these different things. And they just have this giant collection that they've been drawing from. And like, <laughs> you know, God, it's so... <laughs> anyway, like, like I said, also... the, the, the Gonzo version of this thing is like, <sighs> military has collection trying to use them for uh you know good um has trouble controlling them has led to some incidents now dad one of the transformed uh versions the uh volunteers so to speak <laughs> um How much good these things can do if you bred them to be you know yeah, mm -hmm. that's the thing. If only we could harness it, you know what I mean? Like we could, and that's what they always say about everything. Oh, you know what I mean, Ronald and Nancy harness Reagan. Nuclear weapons. <laughs> uh, Ronald and Nancy, Nancy Reagan. Reagan. Were, uh, they they were also very big into the occult, so yep. this could be something that like uh, had been set aside. But uh, like like the Reagans don't have enough to answer for. Um, right. So this could be something that they reactivated, and it's been going going great guns against since the uh, the eighties yeah. or whatever. Yeah. So sorry to do this to you. One time, one of my first times coming to LA, uh, for work stuff. Um, I I was with the guy that I worked with, and uh, we were in Century City at the at Nakatomi Plaza, and um, the doors opened of the elevators, and it was like Secret Service agent, Secret Service agent Reagan, <laughs> Secret Service agent, Secret Service agent. And it was like it was like toward the end of his life, and it was just so weird. And like we got on the elevator after, and it was just me and the guy that I worked with and this woman. And I turned to my friend and I was like, uh, Hey, do you think he remembers being president? And the woman yelled at me for like 17 floors. It was just like, just berated me up and down. Um, anyway, sorry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> anyway, and it was so weird because it was like a cardboard cutout. It was like, whoa, and like monstrously large head and everything you'd think. Um, but anyway, that's my gonzo. The, 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 I, I just kind of like lately, I got to admit, I've just gone into this zone where I really like some of the craziest answers sometimes. And it's like, I just got to admit the idea that this is what's going on with the military, that they've got this thing going on. It's into these things. And it's like, and it's like, you know, they've, they've had escapes <laughs> and problems, um, but always contained. Um, they can't find dad. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, uh, you know, and it's like, I think anyway, like part of that to me would stem from, okay, sorry, one second, but you flip that from the dad point of view. Dad, in this version, um, you know, uh, you know, joins because he believes, um, enjoys the idea of serving, plus it helps his life, sees something he can't accept just like home and won't let it rest here like he felt he had to at home because it couldn't be changed. It's like, I, it's like, I know home sucks, but it's home and I can't change it necessarily. This place is meant to be better. It's just as bad. I whistle blow. I get railroaded into danger. I get labeled MIA. I'm really 
a control subject inside this place for years. And it's like, I don't think it has to be Afghanistan and 20 years ago or anything anymore, but I do think his dad, it's like, I don't know, maybe it is. It, it's a, that's a logic loop that I, I'm definitely willing to listen to whatever anybody's got to say. Uh, Jacob and then Ashley, what you got? What's up, Jacob? He's gone. It's a couple of things. Um, so first, I think it's a little more interesting if she left the city because, oh, can you hear me right now? Oh, uh, yeah. All right. I think it's a little more interesting if she left the city because like, she she was a really good cop but like she fucked up in some way that like derailed her career like she um you know she was like um like a rising police officer but then like she arrested someone who turned out to be innocent or something and then just like one mistake and it's just like never been able to recover um because i just because then she has something to prove right also in solving this mystery like it's also a way for her to like um like you know prove to herself that she can do this Mm -hmm. um but also uh, in regards to the dad and and being a monster and everything i think it's so i think the funeral she comes back for is like a family friend like you know oh my mom's best friend who took care of her when she was sick is dead now um and we should imply it doesn't have to actually be true but i think it's interesting if we imply like when we find out about the monster oh her dad killed her family friend mm -hmm. like if we can because we can die to do one of two things right we can do he's a wolf man right so he turns into a monster and he loses control and he's like, uh, you know, just rages out and kills someone. Um, or alternatively, it's the Frankenstein model. And like everyone thinks he's dangerous, but uh, he's not actually. And so in that case, he didn't kill the family friend, but our main character Ursula thinks he did. But later finds out, no, the dad came to the family friend asking for like help. And then like the military killed her to silence her. So she didn't tell anyone that she saw a monster. Yeah, What's which I think ties in with the earlier mom stuff. Uh, the one thing about leaving the city, I think, is I'd love to switch it around where it's like instead of she made a mistake or did this, she did what was she did the thing, but right. she just arrested one of those people that like get you in trouble for arresting. You know what I mean? Right. Like, somebody like, who was like rich and fuck, powerful. Yeah. Like, don't you know who this is? Exactly. It's like her fuck up was only in being too right. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it, it, yeah. uh, only in like doing the right job. You know what I mean? Um, all right. I, I but I. So I I love it with that little reversal. And I think that's, uh to me, that's the best answer I've heard so far for leaving the city. Um, I, I also love this thing. Uh, it's like, I think what you're proposing is this. Tell me if I'm wrong. Dad visits mom <laughs> secretly. Mm -hmm. um, care, caretaker. I, I like it being the mom's sister or something, but it's like yeah. um, caretaker discovers Um, it, it, event turns wrong, they end up dead. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, dad blamed, but mistake, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. anyway, it's good, it's like, but I know what you mean, like emotionally, it's like a little nicer. Thinks just... it was her dad once she finds out, like, oh my god, the monster is my dad, and my dad killed Auntie whatever her name is <laughs> right but then he finds out like no her dad's innocent the military had to silence her because she saw the the monster yep 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 i uh stay um dad yeah. be captured in that moment military takes out auntie as collateral um if there if there's a if there's a way that the military has to kind of like trigger him into action just the idea of him being used as the the instrument of her demise against his will is kind of nicely awful they are very tra beautifully tragic and it allows her to go in these dual invest like her investigation starts it's like well i'm you know i'm following this monster but what she finds when she pulls the thread which is probably more of a season thing than a pilot thing, but what she finds when she pulls that thread is, du you know, duplicitous military cover up of it. Like there, th this was a military death of my aunt, and why, you know? And at the same time, it's like, okay, why is military killing my aunt? Why is mom saying she visits dad? You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and also maybe putting in there, like you know, maybe the people want her to come back to the town, but maybe somebody who is military who's sort of dissuading 
which would make someone who already is good at their job suspicious and feel like there's a challenge being put before her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's something um, Something else I wanted to mention. So it's definitely important, right? We meet some of the military personnel in the first episode. Like, yeah, we got to meet, like she comes back to the town and it's like, oh, general so-and-so. And he's like, oh, you're back. And like, he doesn't like her very much. And later she finds out, you know, he's involved in this. Yeah. God, there's so many bad versions where it's like, and her brother is in the military, and yeah. the godfather is the ge- is the guy. Everyone's it's in like, the- you know what I mean? It's like, and everyone's interrelated, and they all know each other. It's like, oh god, the the minute I I just call it Hollywood tight. Like the minute it starts to get too Hollywood tight, I always sure. check out. <laughs> like, but yeah, like but unrelated, yeah. Um, Ashley, Christopher Shelley, Vernita, what's up? What's up, Ashley? Um, I wanted to talk about the main character for a second and just like her personality. Yeah, um, me too. And I think since she doesn't have a great relationship with her family, she's like the lone wolf type, single, um, hooks up with people she meets at the bar, no kids, no significant other, lives alone. Um, and that really does tie into kind of like the reality of a lot of Black women in their early 30s. Um you know, being single, being alone, and the way the like American capitalistic system runs, what ends up happening to a lot of Black women. Um, but I also think that she's very perceptive and intuitive, and she tries to detach from her from her emotions. Um, I also think that she relies on her her military and her police background to solve cases. But deep inside of her, I think she she does have like this spiritual, intuitive aspect that she tries to push down. Um, And moving back to this town makes her embrace that because there are supernatural things happening. So she's like forced to go down that like supernatural road and embracing that inside of herself. Mm -hmm. I wonder if that comes from mom. Probably since her mom has that, you know, we said that her mom has dementia, but she she's able to see the father, et cetera. Um, But I do think that we're kind of like moving into like the Stranger Things territory with like the military and the secret um, experiment stuff, which is like, that's what I'm like really seeing. Um, and I don't know how to get away from that other than I do think that we should really like investigate like the supernatural aspect because everything that we've been talking about, it really does seem like the town, you know, it is, um, it seems like the town is being haunted and hunted. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's, to me, it sounds like the town is paying for like generational curses in a way. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much what I've been thinking, listening to everybody. Be- before we dive back in, let's talk about this tone stuff that Ashley brings up. Because um, uh, when I hear Stranger Things, I get nervous. Not because, you know, not that anybody wouldn't admire the success of Stranger Things, but I just don't want to like, you know, it's like, ah, you know, tonally for me. Uh, I Yeah. Anyway, it's just something to think about uh, for a minute. We're going to be we're probably going to do like another 10 or 12 just because I don't want to screw up our uh, time. And I wonder, anyway, talk about that. In a Is second. there a Northern exposure version of this? <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I, yeah, I just don't know if that's the, like, I, you know what I keep thinking about is um, mm. Broadchurch season one. You know what I mean? It's like, Ooh, uh, it's yeah. like condensed yes. and, contained and yes. intense and small town and insular. Yes. Not everybody knows everybody, but it's like, but it is, you know, that sort of zone where it's like, and it, and it's all taken very seriously. Like, I, I don't want to, uh, like, to me, I, I don't want the monster stuff to ever get into goof territory. Like, I want them to maintain a certain, you know, terror. And I again, I don't think in a pilot we would ever see more than one. And even that one only, you know, only breezily. Like, I, I think in terms of a pilot, we would never... We're not going to walk away, I think, from the pilot with the idea that there's a lot of this stuff going on or that it's even tied to the military. I do think we would leave the pilot knowing the military was also looking for this. You know what I mean? Which would tell us everything we need to know. Um, a little Fargo-ish, it feels like. Like, the isolation... In Ooh. setting, but not in execution to me. Like, in, in, no, not I, there's that. always so heightened. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, church is perfect. Yeah. The, everyone I think about, every time I think about this thing, is, as everybody's been talking, is always, yeah, like the really grounded, almost British model, you know? Um, <laughs> um, a grounded British model is what my first writing partner spent his whole life trying to pursue. Um, anyway, sorry. Uh, anything else there, Ashley? Uh, uh, you good? No, that's it for me. <laughs> All right, my yeah, Christopher, what's on your mind? Um, I guess this isn't a pitch so much as it is a question, but I think I actually had several, but 
those were more seasoned, but I think this one does pertain to the pilot, uh, which is, are the father's attacks random or are they deliberate? Is he choosing targets or is he just lashing out? Or in this sort of new scenario that was just pitched, is he just like a monster soldier who follows orders no matter what? I'm I, starting to think this. I'm starting to mm-hmm. think, uh, okay, check check this out. Um, there's like six deaths in mm-hmm. 13 months in this town. Um, they have similarities for sure, but not exact copies. Suspected weirdo serial killer type stuff has helped further divide the town. We know who one side of the town blames and we know, you know, it's like, yeah, you know, um, as it's helped further divide the town when dad appears and ultimately um, is killed. He's scapegoat for all. She's realizing they were different attacks and he took blame dad never killed anybody dad visited mom auntie caught on didn't understand got taken out by military intentionally to cover an alt monster and when she finds dad and ultimately accidentally kills him which is crazy really awful that dead um mia crazy ex-soldier with a grudge against town gets the blame for all the deaths for all the murders and it's case closed you know but she knows that's not the case. And it's almost like that's the first season. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, I mean, I, I, I like, anyway, sorry to do that to all of us, but uh, uh, look, sometimes it goes here. And like, one of the cool things about doing this is it's like, yeah, we could sit here all day and completely bust out exactly what this pilot is. But I think we got a bunch of stuff that's working. Uh, Shelly, what's on your mind? And then Vernita. So to things first um the i'm still hung up on the fact that i don't think she would literally make a plan to go back to this place that she hates agree and i kind of think i would like to have her always like one foot in each like always reaching back to go back like she's she gets sucked in like um i would like her to have left something behind like a relationship or a job or that she is 100 percent taking a leave from and going just to the funeral and then it drags and then something happens and then she but she's always leaning back toward like she's going back she's definitely going back and then things keep getting in the way of that um so that like i would like to have the vision of happiness like that she left behind and like contrast with the monsters and the murders and the things that she wants to that she's been escaping her whole life like that's mm-hmm. the goal was to escape and she escaped and now she's being dragged back in Um, And the second thing is the dad, uh, the facility, maybe he's the whistleblower. And because of the whistleblowing, the funding gets cut off and the facility and they're using like slapstick funding. Like they're just dragging a little bit of funds here and there to keep this program going. And the program has been long going. So they have different versions of the monster Mm -hmm. Um, facilities kind of the maintenance part has been slipping and they have. You know, it's a little bit falling into disrepair. And that's how they are escaping because security is not as tight as it used to be. Mm -hmm. And so, and what if the more newer versions, better versions of whatever this thing that they're creating is, um, are sent out to go collect these other not as savvy monsters that are more like animal attacks or whatever. And that's how dad is sent out to go collect kill one of these things and that's how she's coming back from the funeral she's 
catches up with the old friend. They go out, they're sitting at a bar drinking her and she walks home and then sees dad. And that's the thing that, that's the thing right now that keeps her from jumping on the plane the next day. Yep. Yeah. I, I, yes. As you can see, I'm starting to go through and uh, put some stuff in order of which I think that is definitely part coming up. Bernita, what's on your mind? Hi. Oh, there you are. Hey. I'm never sure if you can hear me. Yeah. So um, I just have two things. Number one, I think um, for the culture that she's going back to, we really have to put in uh, conspiracy theories that the Black community uh, uses to survive. And it's not about being crazy. It's about people seeing things and then denying it for safety. Mm -hmm. So you could have a whole generation that has seen these monsters and have raised their kids that, yeah, they're here. And then you have the other people who just deny it because they want to live in the future. Mm -hmm. And this can be a generational tension that she has with her mother. Mm -hmm. You know, that, you know, these things are real. They're out there to get us. And she's like, this is one of the reasons she left the small town is because y'all always talk this nonsense. And there's a big world out there and I need to see it. So I think the whole conspiracy theory tone will get you away from the stranger things tone yeah, yeah. it's more about the culture anyway. <laughs> yeah there's a culture tension between denying what we see to survive and accepting what we see to move forward and so that is a tension and the second thing is the mom um i had written that you know a friend of mine who is ex-military black woman professional had to go back to caretake for her mom for a few weeks and it turned into seven months and she was a small Louisiana town and she hated that town and that's why she left but she loved her family and went back so there's no tension between the siblings they just all passed you know took turns taking yeah. care of mom so in, it was 11 years <laughs> right right so in the mom's dementia there's a lot of truth because dementia, all it does is break down everything. And these people are honest and real. If you've ever taken care of somebody with dementia, you're going to get your feelings hurt because they are brutally honest. And so when the mom says that's your dad, but he's not the one killing, that's your dad. And your aunt knew it. And she shouldn't have tried to kill your dad. When you're, the mom is spewing all this out, all the other siblings are like, yeah, we're trying to keep mom comfortable. But this girl, before she left, was very close to her mom and, and just can sense there's truth. She mm -hmm. can sense that mom, mom's not in dementia. Mom's trying to tell us something. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it is. And by the end of the pilot, she will know what it is. Mm -hmm. And so these kernels come from her mom sporadically throughout the series. Mm -hmm. And then the last thing I want to say really quick is um, uh, the, the military angle it's just so overused. And um, I liked what Ursula was saying. Well, everything Ursula said was gold. But when she talked about, I think it was her talking about um, people getting out because of the HBCUs. Mm -hmm. What if an HBCU tried to fix damage from the Tuskegee experiment? Mm -hmm. And it turned into, uh oh, sorry. It turned <laughs> into this um, kind of, uh, almost like they became the monsters themselves, almost like we, we we clone Tyrone does. So now this HBCU is the one in control of this whole situation. And they're doing it for culture or for the community. But as they started getting grants and funding, they became more corrupt. And they're the ones that have been holding hmm. these people. <laughs> and the father has escaped, but the father's been allowed to go back and visit his wife over the years. So right. you kind of get away from the whole Stranger Things tone. Because sure. it is turning into Stranger Things for me. And I never watched it because it just, it got, the first season was awesome about family and fear and all mm. these, these nightmares and everything. But then it just got bigger and bigger about government. And then it went to Russia. And, and I was just like, I'm out. So... <laughs> I think just to keep the uh, cultural element that she's going back to, if you tie it more into these HBCUs are research campuses mm -hmm. and they are researching sickle cell and other things, lupus and other things that are affecting the black community very strongly. So if you can tie into that, I think it would be a real difference from what's out there. 
I just want you to and know, I, I see the trap you're laying out there and you're not going to get me, Vernita. I'm not going to go pitch the evil HBCU thing. You forget me. Ha! I see what you're doing. We've eliminated one more middle-aged white man from the no, hierarchy. Well, not, not evil, not evil HBCU. What you can pitch I'm, is that I'm, yeah, I'm, one of their doctors went rogue and got kicked out, yeah, but he yep. took his research with him. But but it it just does it every time it's military. It just yeah, I agree. Just, military, it, yeah. Is a shorthand I just something. think Resident we're, Evil. I just get yeah. like oh, like we're not like the like yellow yellow court. Yeah. Like <laughs> like if like if we like based on what you said, and we were coming back. And my laptop's at 14%. We're at 45 minutes. So I'm going to wrap up in a minute. But I want to go through something with you in a second. But based on what you said, we would come back and examine that. I think military is a good, like, algebraic X placeholder for now. In my mind, ultimately, it would probably be something much more surreptitious. You know what I mean? Like, one of my favorite places in the world is this Greenbrier, West Virginia, where there's, like, this resort that's there. And uh, underneath of it is uh, um, a uncovered in the 90s secret uh, facility where like Congress would have been taken in the event of a nuclear war or something horrible. And now you can like tour through the whole thing and see it. And it's just like the whole thing was built and maintained and used all through the 80s. And nobody knew until somebody in the like the town kept the secret until somebody in the town sort of let it out and it started to come out and then they turned it into a tourist attraction instead. And it's just like I just love stuff like that where it's like you know, like, um, like, like saying earlier about the Nazis and science and everything, it's like, it, it's a, it's a covered, it's a secret thing, like that's been going on here for a long time. And it's sort of taken roots in the town. And if we were really getting into it, what we'd say is like, well, of course, this town is full of assholes. This is, these are the descendants of Nazis who came here, like in post World War Two to sort of be a part of this um you know this like uh, scientific advancements and their culture spread into this thing you know blah 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 anyway um all right let's do uh i really am running out of power i'm gonna have to run and get my cord if we continue and we are running out of time let's do a quick ken and a quick ursula and then i'm gonna run through a take on this thing and we'll roll out of here what's up ken uh build on building on something that you started and uh shelly um uh built on um if if She's in the city, and the recent uh, occurrence is that uh, she arrested the mayor's son. Um, you know, kind of a "Don't you know who I am?" And she's like, "Just this is justice." He resists arrest. He winds up getting roughed up a little bit in the course of the arrest, um, and then instead of um, rewarding her for doing that, she's put on suspension based based uh, uh, pending review that gives her that that tie back to the to the city so you know so it's like yeah. a one month suspension something like that so all of these events are taking place while the right. suspension has occurred she's she's in touch with the police union representative um and but 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 she's you know she's spending on screen time dealing with that um, but it's but it's always a you know you might be able to come back and you might actually be rewarded for for this or you might lose your career and everything is up in the air. Yeah, I think Sharice in the uh co in the comments too has a really good answer for this thing too, which is like, you know, ultimately we just put you know we we. we Maybe this was something that was government years and years and years ago and then spun off and privatized in the 80s. And now there's some company that is like, you know, actually in charge of this kind of stuff and this evil thing uh, to get through. Um, also, um, also, uh, when we're talking about not just kind of the military, like big, big baddie, there's a uh, within within the U.S. Defense Department, there's the, there's DARPA, the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency. Mm -hmm. We could do that or a. Uh, a, a different version of that kind of, you know, change the name to protect the innocent sort of thing, <laughs> but do a version of DARPA where it is, you know, funded by the the uh, the De Department of Defense, but maybe it's not just yeah. the Army or Air Force or whatever. It's like it's like in uh, it, it, it's like in Independence Day. It's why those hammers cost eight hundred dollars. You know exactly. Um, all right, Ursula, take us home, and then I'm going to run through a basic of this thing. Okay, so uh, I just had like um, two things uh, about what Shelly said, just like a riff off what Shelly said, yeah. how she has one foot in, one foot out. Um, I, I like that, but I don't think it should be something physical that keeps her there. Like, I don't think it should be a relationship 
or yeah. like a, a job or anything. I think it should be something internal, like just the, the, the want and need to not want to die in this small town is enough to not want to stay there. You see what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. I don't have to have something back there. The only thing I do have is this desire that I don't want to die and be buried in this 300 square foot graveyard <laughs> that all the black people in town are buried in. You see what yep. I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Um, so <laughs> that I think is enough to make somebody still have one foot in and one foot out. So I don't think there's a relationship. I don't think there's a job. I think just a desire to not end up like everyone else in that yeah. town does. It's, stays. If we were doing... If we were doing these episodes and we had eight or ten of them, and I would make each episode title a quote from the lead character. And the first, the pilot's title would be, I don't want to be buried in this 300 square foot graveyard. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just like, I mean, and like every one of them is just a quote from the thing. I've never seen quotes done as the titles before. I think that's really cool. Um, damn, you got you to gotta, you gotta crack into this character that feels very real. Um, and it, it, it's created a little change in my perception of like... Thing. So I just want to run this by you real quick and then we'll roll. I'm down to 10%. It's a race against nice. power, a race against time and YouTube viewership. Um, there's a monster attack in the small town, not by the dad, we'll later discover, but a really vicious attack. The sixth of these in 13 months, the town has been thrown into disarray over it. We go to the city where we meet her. Disarray, beautiful name for a young girl. Um, we go to the city for this incident. Uh, she basically arrests the wrong uh, rich white guy uh, who was you know the guy was completely guilty and incorrect she violated the societal norms of not arresting the rich white guy in the city uh this particular one in particular maybe uh pays for it with a tattered career that results in a, in a suspension while trying to figure out what to do with herself in the suspension she gets some terrible news her auntie has been killed um in the little town in another one of what appears to be these attacks and for the first time these attacks are almost back to back and the whole town is a little thrown up in into um it, you know, into anxiety about this thing. And she's got to go home. She's got no excuse now not to go home for the funeral of her aunt. The mo We first deal with her being triggered by the monstrous thing, the actual monster that this town represents to her in her life. When she gets there, it's no better. The sibling, now there's an issue because mom lived with the now dead auntie. Uh, she can't be left alone because she's got dementia or at least early stages or mid stages. And the brother or the sibling, whatever the sibling is, really is not in position to deal with mom alone, um, has his own troubles, family, this, that, like other stuff, you know, things that, you know, are going to preclude being taking full time care. So they, they're, she's being lobbied hard to come back and take care of mom. She also has her old friend and best friend closer than a sister growing up where things haven't been quite as close Lately, for the last few years, she believes because she left town, the truth is the friend actually supported her leaving town and roots for her. Um, it's actually because the friend has been caught up in this attempt to fix the neighbor, to fix the town, fix the neighborhood, move it forward, reclaim it, all those things. And it's like reclaim. We never had it to reclaim. Like, you know, how can we be in that? Uh, she wants her to come to town and be the sheriff here to be a role model to help this um for one front facing back facing she would love some help with the secret agenda of solving these murders which she believes are caused by x the big corporation the military whatever that it is the big thing that's there in town um as part of an effort to fully change over the town and take possession of it um scare people away basically like horrible things she does not want to be here she does not want to die in a 300 foot square square foot graveyard she goes back to the city she gets back to the city, takes a look around and realizes, is this life or is this place really worth fighting for? Um, while she's gone, and again, this one feels more tentative, but I like it for the moment to take us home and give the pilot big stuff. While she's gone, her friend in the small town, the muckraker, the person, blah, 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 blah is killed in what appears to be another one of these attacks or maybe even an unrelated accident, whatever that it is. But when the friend dies, that's the thing that lures her back to think there's something more here. And it's not just one thing. It's the mystery laid out by the friend. It's the attempts to the guilt of the attempts of leaving and trying to for, and, and transform this town. It's the mom being alone. It's the career blowing up on her in the city because like, what the fuck? I can't even if I don't when I do the right thing, I'm penalized in this place. Is this really what I need? She goes back. It turns out that her friend, who's been like the city manager or whatever that she had risen to at that point, running for mayor or maybe mayor, had offered the sheriff's job. That job, that offer is now clearly rescinded. There's no job to go take. But 
in the early moments of being there, spending time with mom, mom references, well, you know, if I go into, you know, she's like, well, maybe we need to put you into a place and you go there and blah, blah, blah. It's like, mom's like, well, if I do that, I won't be able to see your dad again. And that sort of throws her. And then we have a nighttime, middle of the night thing. She hears something. She goes out to investigate um, what it could be. And ultimately, it turns out she catches a glimpse of what she's pretty sure could be some mutated, altered, older, but no less familiar version of her dad. And we're out, <laughs> you know? Um, I don't know. That feels decent. I mean, it feels like a good one for two hours. You know what I mean? I, I Give it a week. I, I think we'd sit in a room and make it perfect. Um, but I, but I think it feels like a pretty good outline to start here. Um, we've run way asked long, so I'm just going to like, uh, thank everybody after we stop recording, but, um, like, thank you all for being here. Thanks everybody for watching. hope this is a helpful thing. Um, I am going to try to work something out where this 20 page document that we created today is available. Maybe, uh, I can get Marsha to put a link on it when it goes on YouTube. So it'll be down there. Um, thanks everybody for being here. Hope this was helpful. Hope you enjoyed.